You and a fellow castaway are stranded on a desert island, playing dice for the last banana. You've agreed on these rules. You'll roll two dice, and if the biggest number is one, two, three, or four, Player one wins. If the biggest number is five or six, player two wins. Let's try twice more. Here, player one wins. And here, it's player two. So who do you want to be? At first glance, it may seem like player one has the advantage, since she'll win if any one of four numbers is the highest. But actually, Player 2 has an approximately 56% chance of winning each match. One way to see that is to list all the possible combinations you could get by rolling two dice, and then count up the ones that each player wins. These are the possibilities for the yellow die. These are the possibilities for the blue die. Each cell in the chart shows a possible combination when you roll both dice. If you roll a 4 and then a 5, will mark a player 2 victory in this cell. A 3 and a 1 gives player 1 a victory here. There are 36 possible combinations, 
each with exactly the same chance of happening. Mathematicians call these equiprobable events. Now we can see why the first glance was wrong. Even though player one has four winning numbers and player two only has two, the chance of each number being the greatest is not the same. There is only a one in 36 chance that one will be the highest number, but there's an 11 in 36 chance that six will be the highest. So if any of these combinations are rolled, player one will win. And if any of these combinations are rolled, player two will win. Out of the 36 possible combinations, 16 give the victory to player one, and 20 give player two the win. You could think about it this way, too. The only way player one can win is if both dice show a one, two, three, or four. A five or six would mean a win for player two. The chance of one die showing one, two, three, or four is four out of six. The result of each die roll is independent from the other, and you can calculate the joint probability of independent events by multiplying their probabilities. So the chance of getting a one, two, three, or four on both dice is four out of six times four out of six, or 16 out of 36. Because someone has to win, the chance of player two winning is 36 out of 36 minus 16 out of 36, or 20 out of 36. Those are the exact same probabilities we got by making our table. But this doesn't mean that player two will win, or even that if you played 36 games as player two, you'd win 20 of them. That's why events like dice rolling are called random. Even though you can calculate the theoretical probability of each outcome, you might not get the expected results if you examine just a few events. But if you repeat those random events many, many, many times, the frequency of a specific outcome, like a player to win, will approach its theoretical probability. That value we got by writing down all the possibilities and counting up the ones for each outcome. So, if you sat on that desert island playing dice forever, player two would eventually win 56% of the games, and player one would win 44%. But by then, of course, the banana would be long gone. you get a heads, you can either get the first purple, the second purple, or the white. So there's three combinations if you start with a heads. If you get a tails to start, you can get purple, purple, white. So there's three more. So that's six total outcomes. And then you also are asked to list the outcomes. So if you get the tree, I always have better to list because I can see the combinations in the tree. I can see heads with purple, heads with purple, and heads with white. So the tree will count as a list. Number So that's eight The other way you get that, you'll do the math the end game and say for the letters, there's six options. 
So they never they say in the same time period they came back. All right, questions on one and three? Number four. Number four was the normal type. And um, there's two key outcomes when you put four times. And so I don't think anybody can do that. I see five twenty three, I see five point three, I see five point four, I see five two point three point three point two. Now, this thing is all the way to combination of 6 and 10. Here's one more. You can. We're going to the layer method instead. All right, let's look at the layer method with four coins. We got coin one, coin two, coin three, and coin four. For coin one, we can either get a head or a tail. Right? Second. Now, if I got a head on my first coin, my second coin could also be head. Or maybe it's a tail. My third coin could also be head. But could it be head or it could be tail? And then the fourth coin is the one that I'm still working with, which is four. Heads and heads. Head is about in the tail. Okay, so if I put them at the bottom, um, where there, I see there are eight outcomes. If I put heads first. If I put tails first, I could Possibly get two tails. Or in my third coin, I could possibly get three tails. So this gives me eight more possible outcomes. Let's go to the next one. Can you guys remember what the letter is? The layer method is a little bit harder to make choices about. There's a question and I don't see it. What's it say? It says how many what? Okay. So this is fine, but if it asks you how many outcomes have exactly two heads, then I don't have it all listed. Can you think like answer the questions about that? Yeah, you can. If I want to find how many had two heads originally per the pot, then I would call it like a mess. Like too much about the head. This is two heads, the other one here is a tail. So there's one option of two heads. Head side tail side. Um the other option for two heads would be head, tail, head, tail. Right? And there's another option for two heads would be head, tail, tail, head. So you can follow the two down to find different sides of it. If your first coin's a head. But then you can work around the other one too. So two heads on each one of these. Yeah, so then two out of four. Right. Okay. All right, and then the last one, number four, is it two? Yeah, number four. This one, everyone's really caught up on like that rotation. It doesn't mean you want to put the two back in there. It just means you have six marbles in a bag. You take one out and put it on the table. And you draw the second one, there's only five left in there. Six times five is thirty. There's thirty ways to draw out two marbles out of a bag of six. 
That's not credit. You have to show all the common income. You have to show all the common income. Did you show all the common income? I did not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a So we're assuming that more of the income is being brought in. It's not based on uh, the year of tonight, it's just based on past score. Since you are almost a master, you can probably bring a different question. Yeah, this one is the There's four color combinations. There's four color combinations, right? So here's the actual possibility, okay? Um, uh, no, there's no several ways. There's three ways to pair up two marbles on the floor, okay? The math is to get six. Six marbles. Right. You feel like you have to take them every single time? Yeah. Well, uh, you do, but after one day, you only have to take them like five once a day. What? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, the problem with the four situation is when I really think about all the different combinations, like the, the two greens together and then green one and green three together and then green two and green three together, there's like six of those combinations. When I look at this, well, when you look at this school book recently, um, out of your four combinations, how many times do you get the same color? Oh, wait, I'm not. Are you talking about the same marble? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, one marble cannot equal two people because that one. You can see my screen through it, right? So, how many, how many two colors can we get out of the four? How many times can we get the same color? Right. You're saying there's four combinations. Uh, so, you would get two green, two black, right? So based on your scenario, there's a 50% chance when you when you pull two marbles that you are, are going to have the same color. But when you look at pairing up one and one in these two pairs of three, what really happens is I get the same color uh, two out of five times this time. I get the same color two out of five times this time. I get the same color two out of five times this time. It's not. Yeah, because that's right. Yeah. That's right. So you can't. It's not a visual. It's it's real probability. It's numerical. Okay. Wasn't the big thing of seeing that the individual marbles is that it's just the interpretation of the color? It's just not a pattern. We're not looking at that. Well, it's good to know. Okay. All right. So, um, your objective today is to do five through fifteen. I'll tell you right now, five is, is maybe the longest one. So, we're starting with the very longest one. Eleven is also very long. Um, so, don't feel like they're all as long as five. Some of them are much longer. There is a question about a deck of cards, and so I know not everybody is familiar with cards. There's 52 cards in a deck, and there's, those are divided into four categories called suits. So there's 13 hearts, 13 diamonds, 13 clubs, and 13 spades. Um, definitely three number five, you're going to have to figure it out. And so I'm open to doing the table method and the layer method um, based on what you guys prefer. Wait, what is the 
Method, I would start with Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. For the Monday, the Monday person either wins or loses. Now the Tuesday person, if the Monday person wins, the Tuesday person could win or maybe they lose. And then the Wednesday person could win or lose, win or lose. Like I said, I don't already so your turn. Thank you. 
So there's there's a lot more to this one. So maybe on Monday it moves, but when the next year. Or yeah. So when it hits the most in the middle and then it goes down again. Because at some point you want to know if there's five wins and there's only one scenario of five wins. So the most happens in the middle. So the works too. Right, just depends how many different questions will be asked about the combination. Well, the max, the max behind the total is just um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I do the total before I set this up because if my sample state doesn't match my total, I can't tell on this one. So there's two outcomes for each of these days. So whichever I use, the tree or the table, I need 32 combinations. Why do we have to do this? Well, there's 32 total, but the question is, um, the probability that there's only two winners. If there's one that matches the total, the total is yeah. Matching. Right. But if it says with the outcome, you have to look at that. <laughs> I just finished this one. Yeah. Four minus.
Well, that's why there's only so many people with degrees. Yeah. Because there's only that. So you're willing to do it. Yeah. 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 Ye